We are uh, talking with Kansas Senator Pat Roberts on his campaign bus as he travels around the state of Kansas, uh, actually stop in Hayes. Uh, Senator, as we talk about uh, some defining issues and we talk uh, agriculture, and the, uh, agriculture as, the, as the base of the economy, you've been uh, a long champion of that. The Farm Bill, uh, maybe some people don't quite understand um, how that worked and kind of some of your stances. So I wanted to give you the opportunity to, to explain that. Well, number one, it took 400 days and that's shameful. Uh, we passed a pretty good bill in the Senate, got hung up in the House. The House passed a bill. We came back and... Uh, the bill, pretty, uh, the bill pretty much is headed toward uh, southern producers. Wasn't very happy about that. I don't want farmers going back to plant for the government as opposed to making their own cropping decisions, i.e., you know, freedom to farm. But the biggest thing farmers wanted is crop insurance. We wanted it saved and we wanted it improved, and I was able to do that, so I'm very proud of that. And we'll continue to try to get these regulations off the backs of our farmers, more especially with the EPA. One of the issues that is becoming prevalent is the uh, continued impact of the World Trade Organization. We see now that country of origin labeling and some of these issues, some of the things that have been done in Congress are not passing muster. Well, I tell you what, Cotton uh, made the decision to go ahead with their program several years ago. And they touched the WTO stove, and guess what? It was hot. And all of us are still paying for that out of the General Fund for Agriculture, the CCC Fund. So I think you've got to be careful when you're messing around uh, making a farm bill that actually determines whether or not a farmer uh, plants here or plants there. It's a pretty tricky situation. You don't want to you don't want to get into another WTO case and really get into a lot of trouble. We just have a few days left before the election. Your opportunity to talk to the voters of Kansas. What's the message for them? I want your vote. I need your vote. Uh, we've had a partnership down through the years that I'm very proud of, but I would say again that the uh, road to a Republican majority in the Senate and to kick Harry Reid out of there, in the gridlock, let the Republicans take control, we'll have the responsibility, we'll do tax reform, we'll get the government off your back, we'll lower your taxes. Uh, big difference between me and my opponent. This is Hayes City, America, all right? Uh, he is... Uh, he is for abortion. I'm not. He said we ought to get just past that. Uh, I can't believe he said something like that. That's unconscionable. Uh, he wants to uh, study the pipeline. I want to open it up. Uh, Obamacare, uh, he's for Obamacare, he says it's the law of the land. I want to repeal it and replace it. So you just go down the list of, of, about every issue that you can think of. He's for Obama and I am not. I want to be part of the effort to slow down the Obama agenda if not stop it, and uh, to put Harry Reid out to pasture. Senator, thanks for your time. I appreciate it, Ken. Thank you so much. Kansas Senator Pat Roberts running for re-election. I'm Ken Rogers for AgView. You're watching Kansas Ag Reports. We're continuing our series talking with the candidates coming up for the general election in just a few days. We're pleased to be joined now by Greg Orman, who is the independent candidate for the U.S. Senate seat uh, here in Kansas. Well, Greg, uh, thanks for taking time. I know it has to be a very busy schedule, but thanks for joining us. We're, we're happy to be here, Ken. All right, let's get to it. Uh, everybody has seen the ads, read maybe some of the things in the papers, uh, defining you. I want to give you the opportunity to define who is Greg Orman. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm frankly just a businessman from Olathe, Kansas, who's, who's fed up with what's going on in Washington. I, I think Washington's broken, and I think a lot of Kansans are with me on that. Uh, they see two parties who seem to be more interested in seeing the other party fail uh, than our country succeed. And I, I finally just decided that if we're going to change things in Washington, uh, if we're going to get Washington back in the business of solving problems for the people of Kansas, uh, then we have to run against the two-party system, and we have to hold them both accountable. And, uh, you know, my whole life I've, I've, I've been running businesses. I'm, I'm fiscally very responsible, uh, and uh, I'm probably the only candidate in this race who's been talking actually about the issues and about what we need to do uh, to get our government back on the right track. As an independent, uh, you're going to be one of just a handful. Uh, do you think you can actually get things done? You know, I, I do. I, I think this message is a real opportunity for Kansans 
uh, to send a message to the country that the status quo doesn't work anymore, that you can't go to Washington and simply hide behind your party label, that you have to go there and get stuff done for the American people, for your constituents. And I, I think it's an awfully powerful message for Kansans to send. Uh, and when Kansans send that message uh, on November 4th, uh, I think it's going to reverberate throughout Washington. And it's going to turn Washington, D.C. into a city that realizes we have to start solving problems again. We can't just keep playing games. And, and I think that's an exciting opportunity for the voters of Kansas. Let's start down a couple of those issues. Uh, one, overregulation or regulation from all these agencies. Most people in agriculture think it has to stop. Uh, absolutely, and in fact, one of the first plans that I released when we when we uh, started talking very specifically about issues was my small business plan. And I'm I'm a big believer that 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 farmers are small business people, uh, and in that small business plan, I talk very specifically about how I believe we need to review every regulation we have on a rolling ten-year basis, and and we need to determine the ones. Uh, that need to be repealed and eliminated. I believe that, that uh, small businesses and farmers are overregulated. Uh, and so I've come out with a specific plan to deal with that and address those issues. We're talking with uh, Greg Orman, the independent candidate for Senate uh, from Kansas. We'll have more in just a moment. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. This segment.
Our candidate profile series continues. We're being joined by Greg Orman, who is the independent candidate for Senate uh, in Kansas. And uh, Greg, as we uh, as we talked, uh, one of the issues that I don't think is being talked enough about in this campaign is defense. And uh, rural Kansas, rural America plays a big part in protecting our nation, not only here, but overseas. There's a lot of hot spots. In January, you're going to have a lot on your plate. Well, we are. And, and, you know, it's interesting. Today, we're actually announcing a veterans plan in, in just a little bit. And we've put that together with a number of Kansas veterans, including uh, General Phil Maddox, who's now the head of AUSA for Fort Riley. And, and General Maddox has talked to me at length about the implications of sequester on our ability to defend ourselves as a nation. And what he said is, you know, look, we have to fundamentally alter sequester. You know, the Army is willing to deal with the budget constraints, but they're not willing to have their hands tied in terms of how they can spend money to help defend our nation. Uh, and so I think we need to fundamentally alter uh, the sequester policy as it relates to the Department of Defense to give the department the latitude to be able to defend America in the way that they see uh, best. In our remaining moments, uh, let's just get to the bottom line. Uh, folks wanting to make that final decision on to pull that lever on campaign day, the difference between you and Senator Roberts. Well, you know, I, I think this, this race boils down to a really clear choice for Kansas voters. Uh, do they want the status quo? Do they want a continuation of what we've seen in Washington, uh, where people are focused on fighting, they're focused on winners and losers, uh, and as a result, it's really the American public and the people of Kansas that lose. Uh, I want to go to Washington and focus on problem solving. Uh, I want to go there and focus on people, not politics. And so I think if, if you're happy with what's going on, if you're happy with what's happening in Washington, uh, then by all means, uh, my opponent's your guy. But, but if you think we can do better, if you think Kansans deserve better, uh, if you think Kansans want problem solvers in Washington, uh, and not bitter partisans, then I, then I really think I'm the guy you need to be voting for, and I, I just ask Kansas voters for their support. As you do that, a lot of people use electronic media. You have a website that they want more information. What is that site? Uh, the site's ormanforsenate.com. We'd, we'd love to have uh, uh, voters uh, go there. My, I, I say this often, in, informed voters are our best voters because when they see the, the facts, when they see that we are very fiscally responsible, focused on problem solving, want to roll up our sleeves and go to work for the people of Kansas, I think they end up supporting us. All right, uh, Greg Orman, thanks a lot for joining us. My pleasure, thanks for having me here. Greg Orman, independent candidate for Senate from Kansas. I'm Ken Rogers for AgView. You're watching Kansas Ag Report.